Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to call the Suffolk County Council meeting to order for Tuesday, September 26th. And if we could you please give us an invocation? Let us all stand, please, and remain standing for the Let us pray. Our dear kind Heavenly Father, we do acknowledge you as the one in whom we live, who we may have our being. You are our creator, and we thank you for allowing us to be your servants to do the meet the business that has been placed before us. We thank you for coming allowing us to be here and for giving us the beautiful weather that we're having. We ask your blessings upon everyone under the sound of my voice. And we invite your presence to ask to help us as we go through every uh, agenda item on, on that is before <coughs> us, on the paper before us, and to also bless uh, the gentleman that is going to be leading us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you for the service that he was able to give, and we thank you for uh, letting him to survive the different appointments that he had uh, while he was uh, in, in the military and bless him as he continue his career. And we just ask that you help us to have wisdom, understanding, clarity of mind as we conduct our business and, and come back to this, this table again to further discuss the things that were in the committee meeting that we had. Help us to understand it and to be fair about it and to be visionary so that we can make decisions that would impact those that will come behind us. These and all blessings we thank and ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Tonight we'll be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by U.S. Army veteran Ricky Scott, who served our country from 1989 to 1994. He's a war veteran who served in both Operation Desert Shield and Operation Desert Storm. He currently lives in County Council District 6. Thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. Would you please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Congratulations on your new venture, and thank you very much thank for what you, you do for the community. Thank you. I have a motion to approve. Have there been any changes? No, sir. I have a motion to approve. So I will second to approve our agenda for Tuesday, September 26. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. The agenda is approved. We have a motion to approve our minutes. So moved. It's been moved and properly second that we we'll approve our minutes from Tuesday, September 12th. Any discussion? Anyone all in favor? Aye. Next item on the agenda is land use matters. R <coughs> excuse me, 2317 approved. And 
this prior to taking our set of reading council will have and will conduct a public hearing on the matter. Good evening, Helen Ruth for planning staff. RZ 2317 is at 1250 North Kings Highway on Highway 261. The applicant is Mr. Stephen Jenkins, authorized agent for the property owner. He is here this evening to speak on behalf of the request. Uh, the request is to rezone approximately 25 acres of land from agricultural conservation to R15. It is located on the southwestern corner of the intersection of Claremont Road and North Kings Highway. Uh, right now it is currently an agricultural field. The request to rezone the property um, is really an effort to do a residential subdivision on the property. Uh, this, although it's agriculturally zoned, is in a pocket of the county that does have a couple of neighborhoods that are of a more of an R15 scale, meaning uh, between 15,000 square feet and, 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 and an acre lot. Uh, it is adjacent to AC zoning in all directions, but it is also in close proximity to a neighborhood commercial zone Dollar General property, and there are, all, are parcels to the north and to the east that are part of residential subdivisions that actually have more in common characteristically with an R15 development than with the agricultural conservation development. In particular, that would be LRB Estates as well as the Beach Creek Golf Course community. Uh, it is in the rural development planning area. Uh, normally, rural development planning area is intended to support low density residential development and select non-residential and agricultural activities and relax regulatory and climate. But in areas near counties, small towns, and enclaves, higher density clusters may be supported, especially if the development's a clear extension of kind of the rural village pattern. Uh, we do have some cluster of residential development close proximity, as I, I recently stated. It does, in, in, in a part, kind of support the request for an increase in density. Uh, just to put it into perspective, the lots that you're seeing on the screen immediately to the north are a mix of, um, of four tenths of an acre up to one acre, and then all of the lots that you're seeing down in the south in the yellow area, I apologize for it being very pale, is the Beach Creek community. Those lots are all um, between about four tenths and seven tenths of an acre in size. The R15 district does allow by right a significant density of residential development in as much as three units <coughs> per acre. However, the effective density for the subdivision on this property would actually be less than two units per acre. <coughs> Given the minimum lot size that's required to sustain on site septic system, public sewer is not available on this property. Um, and there are large swaths of this property that aren't actually suitable for septic. As Mr. Edens requested at the last meeting, I've included a soils map for you. Uh, this is a blending of Norfolk A and Norfolk B soils, which are actually fairly decent soils for septic, but there's a large 10 acre swath. So a little under half of the property that's Lynchburg soils, which are severe for septic. Uh, your seasonal high water table on these properties are between six to 18 inches below ground, which makes them not ideal for perking. While I'm not gonna say you can't put a septic tank on Lynchburg soils, you need a lot more land to do it, and you may require a remediation or doing different types of soil or septic systems than a traditional in-ground septic system that we're used to seeing here. When we look at the surrounding zoning, the property is currently zoned agricultural conservation. The purpose of the AC district is to protect and preserve areas of the county which are presently rural or agricultural in character and use and are uniquely suited to agricultural use. Where urban development is permitted, a strict quality standards should be required. The intent of the R15 district is to recognize the essential suburban living character of significant portions of the Central County where low density single family residential development is the primary living environment. Um, we have a changing pattern of living and work and home. Uh, so R15 in this particular area really is fairly consistent with what's immediately around it. When you factor in the environmental factors of the soils on this property, although from a purely technical zoning standpoint, absent environmental factors, <laughs> with the AC zoning, you could do um, a bunch of one acre unit lots, uh, you actually are going to end up with the same lot yield going to R15 on this property as you would doing an AC development. We're just going to be shifting the density to a portion of the property and then leaving a larger area open or much larger lot size. 
This is what the site looks like today. Back to the comprehensive plan. Uh, it is, uh, the rural development plan area is generally meant to support low density residential development. Um, but this request to rezone uh, to R15, we do find is generally consistent with the comp plan when you look at it in context of the development to the north and to the east of it. Planning Commission does recommend approval of this request. Um, we do believe that residential development in this area on smaller lots less than an acre is potentially consistent with the rural development planning area and policies of the comp plan from a context standpoint of what's surrounding it. Would you see us standing up here for uh, R15 in the Rural Development Planning District in an area where you don't have adjacent development? Similar, likely not. That's why we say you should take great care when you are considering adjusting the zoning classification in these areas of the county uh, that would permit additional residential development that's on average beyond one unit per acre. Uh, as we said, the on-site septic systems on this property are really gonna regulate how the density works on it. And for those reasons, we do believe that it is acceptable to R15. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Can you go back to aerial view, which was, I think, the second <clears throat> Sometimes the problem is the jailer comes in just to get rezoned that highlighted area. Then the next one comes in like adjacent to it, where you already are 15 there, so that's where it's going if it, if it happens. And, and like she says too, if they leave it AC, they can get about the same amount of locks on it as it can in R15. No, you can't do that. You can't put septics on those sides. No, Ten acres, you can't put septics on Ten acres, you can't. Oh, yeah, no, you can't. Put you can't hold the same right. lots. That's right. Yeah, same amount of lots. So, Ms. Rubin, are you saying that each lot will have to be determined individually whether or not the soil will produce <coughs> a number for the septic system? Really, yeah. I mean, you know, as, as part of the due diligence for the development process, because DHEC is so exorbitantly backed up in doing their own perk tests, uh, developers generally will hire a third party soils consultant to evaluate a lot layout plan to determine the areas suitable for development. Um, just based off of the USDA soil maps and what I'm seeing here, I can safely say that in that 10 acres, I'm not saying you can't put any houses in there, but I'm gonna say that it's probably gonna be costly if the soils maps are accurate. And in my experience, they've been pretty accurate across the county. So the area that you really are seeing practical for development because of road infrastructure costs and putting in water lines and power lines is really that area to the east side of the property that you see in yellow that's not highlighted in that brownish color. Excuse me. In the 10 acres, you can put a house, a backyard, a front yard, where the septic is going is in the other area. And the perfect. And the same down on that corner down there. You can put houses in the brown area as long as the drain field is in the other area. So yeah, you can add the houses in there, but I'm just saying. Sure. The houses have to be higher than the flow ground. Mm -hmm. To make it work, so it's only you have a chance to talk. Excuse me, yes, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Mr. Rubin, I noticed in the planning committee minutes, only four of the seven planning commissioners voted to approve this. Do you have any idea why the other three chose not to? I don't dwell in their minds. So I really don't. It was their personal decision based on the information that was provided to them. Um, I do know that at least one of the persons that voted against it has a very strong environmental ethos. So they tend to vote against things that they see might be potentially objectionable in, um, from an environmental standpoint. Um, as far as the other two, I really don't know. Um, I didn't have any conversations with them to ask why they voted against it because the powers of that board is majority rules and in this case the motion was to approve based on that four to three vote and that's what I brought forward. Pretty close vote. Okay. Any other questions or comments from council? Okay, Mr. 
Thank you. I'll have further comments out. And now to clear the public comment portion of public hearing of this agenda now open. Anyone well wishing to speak for or this result of the question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm Steve Jenkins. Uh, the, the idea was to try to put some more housing because we're short on lots in town to try to build houses on. And of course, that's so close to Shawfield, there's a lot of need for housing in that area. So, being that we can use maybe the first 10 acres there and put 15 to 20 houses together, and then maybe one or two on the bottom side, but the low, the price. The lowland or uh, the Litchfield soil won't work with a septic tank, won't drain. So you can use it for parks and, and uh, part of a lot, but you can't put a septic tank on. Yeah. That, I appreciate the opportunity for y'all to look at it and give us uh, some assistance. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak for this rezoning request? I'll switch over anyone wishing to speak against this rezoning request. Please come to the podium and state your name for the record. Good evening. I'm Brenda Lindsay, Florida. I live on North Kings Highway, right down from 1250, which I've been looking for. I'm going to put 25 houses as the first applicant state. But that may be just interest. I went looking for the sign for public hearing. The public signs for public hearing on Claremont Lane. Oh, there are two signs in Claremont Lane for the public hearing, none on North Kings Highway at 1250. So if the applicant is stating the address is going to be 1250, why wasn't a sign placed there for people in the community to find out where this development was going to take place? So we have to drive all the way around trying to find where this this problem is going to be. And being in that area, we've already had all the signs being placed properly, so that the community can know what's going on. When the Dollar General came, the sign was down in the ditch under the grass. So how can we know about a public hearing when the signs are not placed by the community to be aware of what's going on in the community? This time of year, the geese are flying back south. They land in that in the pasture behind me and in that open cornfield out there. Again, that's an environmental impact. And we are in the country doing people out there because we like the space we have and the things we can do. We get too many houses, they began telling you what you can and cannot do with your own property. But my thing is, it was so above board, why wasn't a sign for the public hearing placed at 1250 North Kings Highway? And all of the signs were on Claremont Lane. Let's be open and above board of what's going on in our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ross. Anyone else? <coughs> my name is Mike Miller. Um, Michael Miller. 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 Yes. Um, and I'm from that community also, living um, Horatio. Um, my one of my concerns is that uh, I heard the gentleman said putting X amount of houses on ten acres of land, and I. From hearing what she was reading, I you know I guess it's zoned for a, a one house to be on one acre land. So if you could put uh, what, twenty five, let's say twenty five houses on 10, 10, 10 acres of land, what impact you know is that going to have for the near future? You're talking about the surface system, um, and I'm quite sure some folks in that area still uh, don't. It's not connected with the, uh, the the water from High Hill. Some probably still have their deep well pump or shallow well pump, uh, 18, 20, 20 feet down. 
um, what impact is that going to have on their, you know, the water system um, with people still using their well water? And also the, uh, the long-term impact of individuals in that area, if you rezone it, I know taxes is going to go up. And we have people in that area that's not at that level of, you know, tax being um, going up. But um, I'm looking at long-term future. I'm for development. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not against development. We need development. You know, but X amount of houses on an acre of land. Let's be real. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Anyone else? Good evening, I'm Gabriella Prosser. Ma'am, what's your name? Gabriella Prosser. What's the last name? Prosser. Prosser. P R O S S E R. Prosser, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I am a middle school teacher in the community, and we have lived here in Sumter County for 28, 29, almost 30 years. <laughs> and um, we bought the property. We actually have the property that is. Um, right beside this, right here, and so um, we are very familiar with the not perking situation and all that. Um, so it is true, it will not perk. Um, but the point that I would like to make is just like um, as a lady beforehand, when she came up here and she expressed how it seems like down our road we have had a beautiful, peaceful country setting. And that's why most of us live out here, because we enjoy the community and the country life that Sumter County provides. Um, and now we are being imposed with um, all these homes that are um, changing our farmland into communities. And again, just like the other gentleman stated, I am not against communities. I am not against growth. I think that's great. But the area that we are in has a lot of historical value. It, um, it has a lot of animals, a lot of livestock, a lot of, um, not livestock, but um, free range animals, deer, uh, fox, coyote. Um, we even had a panther come in our backyard. Um, so there's, there's a lot of livestock from the swamp that come back up that way. Um, but what we don't appreciate is people trying to come in there and build up an area that we purchased, we paid our hard-earned money for, and everybody that's in here, they worked hard for their money to purchase the land where they live, and we chose this community because it was a quiet, peaceful, rural neighborhood, and now um, people are trying to sneak things in, just like the store. Nobody knew about it until it was boom there. The gas station, he came in and positioned us and said, hey, I'm putting a daycare. This is great. And then, oh, no, I, I can't make daycare um, policy and regulation on that. Bill. I'm going to change it to a liquor store and gas station. So now you're telling us he's going to come in and he's going to build this community. And we're trusting y'all that you are telling us the <coughs> truth. But we still have the fear in the back of our mind, if y'all allow this, what is going to happen in our community? What's going to happen? Okay, so since we have been there 28 years, after the store and the Dollar General was built, we have had four shootings. And the bullets have flown across my yard. And we do horseback riding lessons. And there were children taking horseback riding lessons in my yard when those bullets came flying over. This is not the kind of development or improvement or whatever you want to call it. That's not what we want in our neighborhood. And um, also the traffic. These roads, they can't handle the amount of traffic that's going to happen when they get finished building. And they are still building lots across the street down the way. There's still empty lots that don't have houses, so I'm kind of confused with that. We're running out of lots to put houses. I'm kind of confused about that. But um, it is a special community, and we would like to keep it the way it is and not have um, more traffic 
and all you have to say. But I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wells. Anyone else? Public comment portion is now closed. What is the issue of questions? Mr. Chairman, I have a few comments. Wait a minute, please. Mr. Marshall. What's the pleasure of counsel? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you could, I'd like to just go ahead and have some discussion first. <coughs> yeah, if you would, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make my comments first. Okay. Mr. Rubin, you got something else you want to say? No. Uh, she's going to take away a question. I do have a question that she can probably all, all maybe. Do we have a site plan yet? We do not. It's generally not the practice to require a site plan at the time of rezoning. Thank you, Mr. Washington. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To follow up on what Ms. Prosser said in our informational that we were given on the project under zoning, it specifically says that the purpose of the AC district is to protect and preserve areas of the county which are presently rural or agriculture in character and use are not uniquely suited to agricultural use. Where urban development is permitted within the district, strict quality standards should be required. The other thing that concerns me, on the final page of our document, it says, the site is not accessible to any current or planned public sewer utility, meaning that on-site septic systems would be required for each individual lot. The applicant would be able to develop single-family lots as small as 15,000 square feet, which would be 0 0.34 acres. The density clusters may be supported, especially if development is a clear extension of the rural village pattern, and if public water and sewer is available. It is not available. The rural development planning area clearly outlines that residential densities shall be supported at one unit per one acre or greater. The request to resolve the property is potentially consistent with applicable Sumter 2040 comprehensive plan, provided that the total amount of development on the track is at one unit per acre or greater. There is no public or private sewer service provider capable of serving the site. And for that reason, Mr. Chairman, I would ask my colleagues to join me in not supporting this project. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That concludes my, my, my comments. I make a motion that we deny. Thank I second. We have a motion and second that we deny. Second reading of RZ 2317, all in favor of opposing. Another question, Mr. Chairman. Across the street, in the picture, we're looking at those are what half acre lots. Correct, sir. They were approved they were prior to the yeah. yeah. and, and these ones are going to be three quarter acres. Is the same thing, right? On average, they'll be three quarter acres or, or larger. Probably. General rule of thumb with optimum soil conditions, you'd need about 22 and a half or 22,500 20, square feet, yeah. which is yeah. between four tenths and a half an acre. And that's assuming optimum soil conditions. Yeah, optimum there, so, so uh, sure. but, but from a from a pure regulatory standpoint, if it were rezoned to R15 and they met the development standards in terms of engineering submissions and other things, they could be 15,000 square foot lots with 100 feet of lot frontage. You said the tank. 
the requirement for a septic tank on site would necessitate larger lots. The smallest lot that I've seen in the county with a 1,200 square foot home meeting current development standards for environmental requirements is about 17,500 square feet. I haven't seen anything smaller than that that has a septic system that needs to be had standards for today's regulations. I'm not saying they don't exist, but I am saying that they were not permitted within the last 10 to 15 years. Do we have further discussion? Just comment what you think is about we need to have a very short supply of homes here in Salem County. They got to go somewhere. I just think it's the, the size of the lots that you're talking about is we don't have a, that you just can't get what you need in there. When you pile them up, that's just I don't know. I don't think you do that. It's not a rule to me. That's right. Size and, an issue. and I'll just comment a little bit further. When you put that many septic tanks that close to each other, you are asking for soil problems. You're asking for water issues. You're asking for environmental situations. Maybe not today, but down the line. And most of the folks that live out in that area, I'm related to most of them. I'm fifth, sixth generation. And so we've been there a long time and we've taken care of the land. The land farms well, people live in agreement with each other. And we want development, but we want the right kind of development. And these houses are just completely too close together. Any further discussion? Can we ask Mr. Pinkham a question? Mm -hmm. Have you looked at putting one acre lots in there, Nancy, and how many you could get? Uh, I have not because I don't think that, I don't think we can make it work with the numbers, but I think if we would maybe, if the county would let us put the number at no more than one house per acre for the whole place, maybe we can... An average. An average. We wouldn't, wouldn't go over that density, which would meet that requirement, but we still will have to put the set tanks in the high ground. That's just all there is to it. Otherwise, you have to go with an engineering system that is uh, not as easy to get, get done. I mean, looking at it, you've got a little bit of experience. You can, you can get 25 in there anyway. <clears throat> right. If, if it was one acre and yeah. everything was good, we could get 25. But because we can't use 10 acres for the septic tanks, we've got to put the houses and the septic tanks closer together so that we can use it and let that be uh, part of the yards or some parks or something else because it's just not suitable for the septic tanks. But we would not exceed the, the 25 units for the whole place if that's a possibility. If you've got 15 acres of usable, and a half acre lot, you could potentially put 30 lots in there. Well, we still you said you would yeah. drop back to the Yeah, I'm going to max back, back to the 25 if that's, if that's suited. Yes, sir. Mrs. Chairman, the, the, the real elephant in the room is that we don't have public water and sewer extending out there. there well, we have water. There is water. There's water. There's water. There's water there. But no public sewer. Oh, no, that's what's on the subject. So, so I mean, the growth is going westward. That's where the growth is going. And we have to make a concerted effort to prepare for that growth. We've not yet done that yet. And that's what we have to do. And I agree, Shore Air Force Base is coming that way. It's going westward toward Columbia. But we have to do what we need to do to encourage development. There is some work that we need to do as a county to prepare that area for growth. Well, I think that many other concerns. We have so much land around the base that is military protection that we can't utilize. But we, have, we, we are planning, and this is out of the military protection epidemic. I, mean, I don't think we ever saw that map, but the epidemic it is. It's at the south side of it. Yeah. 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 Not a concern that we need to look at right now. Any further discussion? 
We have a motion and a second on the floor to deny second reading of RZ 2317. All in favor of denying second reading, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Okay. RZ 2317 is denied. New business. Midlands Fatherhood Coalition. 